Right guys, let's just do one more set for this next one. Corral, can you go in there for Brynja? We'll just see how you go in the DM role. Bessero, what are you doing here? I thought you were signing with Man United. I went for the medical, but couldn't stand the thought of leaving. And the fish and chips in Manchester were rubbish. Oh, that's... I love you, man. Oh, thank God we could not find anyone near as good as you. Boys, training's cancelled. Let's go to the pub. Bears for Bessero. Woohoo! Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 120 of Who's the Vic Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up in today's episode we start off Champions League qualifying for the 2031-32 season. We take on Baitar Jerusalem and hopefully get through to the third qualifying round. Come the start of next week we'll also check in on how the other Icelandic teams are getting on down in Conference League qualifying. So if you are looking forward to today's episode then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button, turn that notification bell on as well, all that good YouTube stuff. But we start off today's episode with a big relief off the back of yesterday's, if you missed that when it was a game against HK prior to doing our squad look through leading into this European qualifying cycle. I'll leave a link to that over in the top right corner, but we did think that Bussero Gay was going to leave us for Manchester United or a number of very big clubs. He did tell us he wanted to leave the club. Thankfully, though, he's rejected contracts from all of those clubs. I have no idea why, but with only about a week or so left in the transfer window here in Iceland, I think that means hopefully we can get him to stay here and he will be part of this Volsunga squad for the rest of this season as well as years to come. That is a massive relief because we would have really downgraded in that area if we did lose Bussero Gay. So that is a big, big boost heading into this European qualifying cycle off the back of what we thought might happen late in yesterday's episode. But as I said today, we are entering the second qualifying round of the Champions League. Our opposition is going to be Baitar Jerusalem out of Israel. They defeated a team out of Kosovo by five goals to nil on aggregate in that first qualifying round. But I'd like to think this is still a team we can take care of over the course of these two legs, which will be coming up in today's episode. Look at their team there. They play a 4-2-3-1. Three-star reputation clubs are the same as us, albeit I do think we're quite a good three-star reputation club compared to some of the other clubs that do have that three-star reputation. This should, though, be 100% a team that we are capable of beating, especially with Bussero Gay still at the club. In terms of players to watch out for on the opposition, yeah, here's Kill their striker as a player. I was looking at signing a few seasons ago just for whatever reason. We just couldn't quite get him to be interested in joining us here at Volsung. That's probably something he regrets these days, but he is quite a decent striker. We haven't scouted him for a little while. as we've sort of gone past his quality at this club these days, but he's a decent striker. That's probably the player we do need to look out for here on the opposition in this upcoming tie in the second qualifying round. Before we do get into that, we've played one game off the back of yesterday's episode and once we did that little recap of the period past when we did play HK and pick up that 4-1 win thanks to a lot of late goals off the back of that red card to Anthony Paris, just the one game off the back of those games we recapped after that and that was in the Molka Bigger in fourth round we picked up a nice 5-1 win here with our rotation team a hat trick to Chakachare, a double to Fabio Mariano those guys still putting a lot of pressure on Frederick Larson and Matthias Aguile in our starting lineup in our first choice team here for this upcoming European season. But this is definitely a tie. We should be winning and hopefully we can make our way through nice and comfortably to the third qualifying round for the start of next week here on the channel. And while we're also talking about European football, of course, we do have three other Icelandic teams in the second qualifying round of the Conference League. Towards the top there, you can see two of them. Nuts KR are taking on a team from Latvia in RFS. That's potentially not too bad a draw for those guys, HK, we have very, very high hopes of those guys reaching the group stage of the Conference League. Of course, after they made the group stages of the Champions League last season, they take on a team out of Cyprus. So that should definitely be a tie. They win, you would like to think, and we make our way down further to find the third Icelandic team, and you'll find them now just down below the top 
and it is nuts. They take on Waterford of Ireland. That's an interesting matchup. Waterford are a team I actually used in the beta of last year's game before I started this YouTube channel. So that might be an interesting one. Probably Waterford the favourites for that one. But those other two ties, I would like to think we could get a few Icelandic teams through to that third qualifying round for the Conference League. And HK, as I said, definitely hoping that they can go through to the group stages of this competition. With most of the players that we loaned out to them last season still there, as well as all those additions that they did make over those last few episodes with that money they did get from last season's Champions League campaign. But we go into this one with that first 11 that we did run through in yesterday's episode. However, there is one suspension that we do have to deal with. Nicholas Zimmerman is going to sit out the first leg of this tie here against Baitar Jerusalem. That means that we're going to put Patrick Nygaard in there as he has been in quite good touch for us in that backup team, but that is the only change to the bench, exactly the same as what it has been over the past few episodes, and we'll get stuck into things with the first leg at the Fram Reykjavik Stadium. Hopefully we can pick up a good result here to take into the away leg. And just shy of seven minutes into this one, we have the first corner, we put this into the mixer, Bussero Gay goes far post, and Frederick Larson tucks it away, that is a perfect start at one of our homes away from home. For this Champions League season, Bussero Gay immediately putting his stamp on this game, staying at the club, tries to head this on target, puts it far post Frederick Larson, the new club captain, tucks that away and we go 1-0 up nice and early here in the second qualifying round. And up to the 16 minute mark for our next highlight is a goal kick here for Baitar Jerusalem, our Israeli opposition, but we are on the attack not too long off the back of that clearance, Lasana Dumbia. Gets that out to Patrick Nygaard, squares it far post there for Frederick Larson, and he will pick up an early double, and we have hit the ground running for this Champions League qualifying cycle, and that is exactly what we want to see. It has been a few years since we have actually participated in the second qualifying round of the Champions League, so I wasn't too sure what to expect here from our opposition, but so far it's looking good. An early double to Frederick Larson puts us 2-0 up in the home league. And five minutes off the back of that Frederick Larson double, we do have a goal kick here from Baitar Jerusalem. They pump it deep, but we do win the ball in the air. As I mentioned in yesterday's episode, the only tactical switch we have made from the one we were using last season, we now play with a high defensive line instead of a standard defensive line. Just going to see how that works out for us in this upcoming season. It's been working pretty well so far domestically, albeit hard to gauge too much based on that as we are by far and away the best team in Iceland for the most part as proven by our accomplishments in the save so far. Great chance for a hat-trick there for Frederick Larson, but a good save that time from the Baitar Jerusalem goalkeeper. But we are all over these guys nice and early. We'll see if Gay gets his head on the end of that. It's saved by the goalkeeper, but he only parries it down into the path of Kalen Rakasan. He looks to keep his good form going from the past European season where he picked up a lot of goals and assists. It's a little bit of a fortunate goal this one. As I said, good save there from the goalkeeper, but falls right into the path of Rakazan. We have three nil up halfway through the first half. And we go all the way forward to the 41 minute mark for our next highlight. Another goal kick here for Baitar Jerusalem, but Ali Ramadan does claim that. And we just keep the ball there through Lasana Dumbia, hoping for a big season from him, the wonder kid midfielder, one of the new additions to this team. And that's a nice ball there. From Rakasan to Nygaard, heads it back. What a strike from Patrick Nygaard into the bottom left corner, but he is offside. That was one heck of a hit. But unfortunately, this header here, he must have just been offside from the ball forward only about a half stride or so. Wonderful hit, but it does remain 3 0. Only a few minutes shy here of half time. Patrick Nygaard robbed of an absolute wonder goal there in the Champions League qualifiers, and he probably won't get too many chances this upcoming season in these Champions League qualifiers, as you'd imagine, that Nicholas Zimmerman will work his way back into this team. It's a good chance there for Baitar Jerusalem, where Lurvik just does enough to keep that out, and it looks like it's going to be 3-0 going into halftime. And that is halftime in the first league of this Champions League qualifier in the second round, and we have been pretty dominant, just that really late chance there to Baitar Jerusalem, but we well and truly deserve our 3-0 lead here going into halftime. If we can keep putting the goals away, in the second half, we might not actually need to bother coming back for the second leg, but so far it is looking very good. No changes needed as we take a 3-0 lead into the second half of this home league. And up to the 65-minute mark, we're going to make our first substitution. No highlights so far in the second half. We've got a few options here on the bench, but Chaka Traore 
probably the most suitable in terms of a right winger down there. So he will come on for Patrick Nygaard, who, as I said, got robbed slightly of a pretty good goal there, just shy of half time, albeit quite rightly, because he was offside. That's our first sub used, still 3 0 up with 25 minutes left of the first league. And not too long off the back of that first substitution, in fact, before we can even make it, we do have another highlight starting here with us on the ball right around the halfway line. That is one of the benefits of using this higher defensive line. Nice ball forward there to Nygaard, plays it back to our striker Nygaard, tries to slot Larson through for his hat-trick, and he will put that away. That's the second assist today for Patrick Nygaard, so at least he goes off with a few credits next to his name, and that puts us in a really strong position already for this tie 4-0 up with just over 20 minutes left. Aguirre played that back forward to Nygaard and Frederick Larson makes another good run and after a few chances to complete that hat trick in the first half this time he does tuck it away 4-0 with just over 20 minutes left. And not too long off the back of that fourth goal we are back down here for a corner and Bussero Gay gets a goal to go alongside that earlier assist the man that decided to stay puts that away, and we are now 5-0 up with about 20 minutes left. That is mercy law territory, where I can give my voice a little bit of a rest for the second leg. If we can grab some more goals, that would be great, but already in a great position here, 5-0 up with just over 15 minutes left of the first leg. And up to the 79-minute mark, we're going to make our last few substitutions here. Not much happened in that highlight before off the back of that fifth goal, so that's why we cut that one out, but we do have Levan Tam, who has picked up a yellow card, so Ian Carlo will come on for him, and also Lasana Dumbia is down to a red heart, so Karel Giroud will come on for him, that will be our substitutions used, 5-0 up here with 10 minutes left, and that is full time in this one, we pick up a 5-0 win, pick up a few late yellow cards in that one, hopefully those don't come back to bite us during the second leg, but we are in a great position, very nice 5-0 win there, really threatened by our opposition at all in a good performance there from our slightly new look first 11 in their first taste of European football for this upcoming season. With that 5-0 lead, what I think we might do here is come back, show you guys the highlights of the second leg because really I can't see things getting turned around from here. But what we might also do is show you guys the highlights from all the other ties down in the Conference League involving the Icelandic teams as well. So to make up for cutting out that second game, we'll come back, show you guys a lot of football highlights before we see who we are going to be playing, hopefully, in the third qualifying round at the start of next week. And we are back about to do a rather large highlights package here of the action from all of the Icelandic teams that we haven't covered off so far. And we're going to start off with our second leg against Baitar Jerusalem in Israel. Of course, we took that 5-0 lead, which you just saw, into this league. And we got off to a good start here at the nine-minute mark. Lasana Dumbia plays that out to Lee Van Tam Zimmerman. One, two there with Fasaroge tucks it away in the bottom right corner to give us a 1-0 lead on the day, and then about five minutes shy of half time from a similar sort of build-up here, we did make it 2-0, Dumbia puts this far post, and this time it is Matthias Aguile who gets on the score sheet to give us a 2-0 lead, just shy of half time, but we did make it 3-0 at half time, yet again here, Rakasan far post Zimmerman just gets that past the goalkeeper at his near post to put us 3-0 up very early on here in the second half. Dumbia puts the ball into the mixer. Yet again, Basaroge with a header goal, which made it 4-0 on the day, 9-0 on aggregate, and not too long off the back of that. We made it 5-0 yet again. Zimmerman squaring that in there for Matthias Aguirre, and we actually did a little bit better than we did in the home league because with 10 minutes left, we made it 6-0 and 11-0 on aggregate. Some good short passing there. Aguirre linking up with Chaka Traore. We absolutely smash our opposition there over both legs and make it through 11-0 on aggregate. So we are quite safely through to the third qualifying round of the Champions League. And the team that we're going to be taking on in that third qualifying round is the winner of the tie right at the bottom. That was between Applewell of Cyprus and Norkaping, I believe is how you might say that, of Sweden. And somewhat surprisingly, it is the Swedish team who go through 5-3 on aggregate. So that's going to be our opposition come the start of next week, IFK. Norkaping. I'm not too sure if I'm pronouncing that right, so apologies if I'm not, if you know that being Swedish and all, but another three-star reputation club there. A little bit stronger country in terms of their footballing quality, but you'd still like to think we can get the job done over those guys in that third qualifying round to start off next week and make our way through to yet another Champions League playoff. Of course, the board do expect us to make the group stage of the Champions League these days, as do I as the manager of this pretty decent Volsinger team we are building up here 
in the save. But now to go down and check in on the highlights from the games in that second qualifying round of the Conference League from our free Icelandic teams. First off, we'll run through the HK tie there against Limassol. As you can see on screen, they actually only managed a nil-all draw in the home league, the first league. So that was a little bit concerning, especially seeing as they did put out quite a decent lineup for that one, albeit missing some decent players they could have put out there, like Vlade Saric, but that was still a slightly worrying result there from the first league of that tie for HK. Thankfully, though, they did get their act into gear in the second league. I thought I'd be able to watch the highlights of these games, but that's not the case, so made an absolute balls up of that, but nonetheless, they got the job done away from home, picking up goals at the 17th and 60th minute, including one to one of our former players there in Vlade Saric, albeit that was off the back of an early red card there to the opposition. They grab one back in the 69th minute. Very nice indeed, but HK thankfully go through to the third qualifying round there off the back of a 2-1 win. Next up, we check in on how Nuts KR got on. They took on RFS of Latvia. They did the job in their home league, picking up a 2-1 win there thanks to two early goals, albeit the opposition did reply fairly shortly after, but they still got the job done there. Took a 2-1 lead into the away leg and they did exactly the same job away from home albeit they did pick up two rather serious injuries there by the look of it so that could be a little bit concerning for those guys going into the third qualifying round but they pick up a 4-2 win on aggregate so they actually do it a bit more comfortably there than HK did and they also make their way through to the third qualifying round of the conference league so so far that is three out of three for Iceland but unfortunately, Nats did not get off to quite as good a start in their first league. They suffered a 2-1 defeat there at home to Waterford. They did get a goal back in the 37th minute to equalise things, but then conceded a penalty with 14 minutes left. So did face a 2-1 deficit going into the away leg. And as with Nats, KR, that result was mirrored in the second leg. So unfortunately, Nats are the only Icelandic team who did get knocked out here in the second qualifying round off the back of two. 2-1 defeats there to Irish opposition in Waterford, but that's still a pretty good effort. Three of the four Icelandic teams making their way through to the next qualifying round, the third qualifying round for these UEFA competitions. If we have a quick look forward to the third qualifying round for the Conference League, you will see right up the top, Natskaya are taking on a team from Bulgaria in Batev Vlaka, so that could be an interesting tie, potentially a winnable one there for Natskaya, so that would be quite useful. That might give us a sneaky chance there with maybe getting two teams into the group stages of the Conference League. And if we make our way down a little bit further, we'll just scroll down so my head's not blocking HK's opposition, but they take on a Norwegian side in Starbuck. I'd like to think off the back of those guys beating, I think, a better Norwegian team in Champions League qualifiers last season. HK can certainly get the job done there, but they probably need to be a little bit sharper than they were in that second qualifying round where they were just a little bit sloppy I think it is fair to say, but certainly still have high hopes there for HK making the group stages of the Conference League. So that's a decent start to European qualifying here in the second round. Three of the four Icelandic teams making their way through to the third qualifying round, including us. We will be taking on IFK Norkaping at the start of next week. As I said, that should be a tie that we are capable of winning quite comfortably, taking on a team of the exact same reputation as our opposition. From today's episode, albeit from a slightly stronger footballing nation, I think it is fair to say, in Sweden. But that pretty much does it for today's episode. Just to show you guys that first leg of that tie in that second qualifying round, because we did really wipe the floor with our opposition. Unfortunately, if I could show you guys the highlights from those conference league games, that was not the case, but a decent run through there of how the other Icelandic teams did get on. Before we do wrap up today's episode, just a little update on some transfers out, because we have loaned out a lot of players since the end of yesterday's episode, most notably some players who are right on the fringes of that Champions League squad and some who could have actually taken part in these games. So we've loaned out the likes of Brahima Makalau, Charlie Shaw's gone to Fulham, Jorge goes out to get some regular first team footballers, he really could use the development. Thomas Tishi also goes out as well as a few other youngsters who wouldn't have got first team football, but we've been loaning out some players off the back of yesterday's episode just to make sure that they do get some regular first team football to try and help those guys develop nicely and then maybe they can take a part in the Champions League campaign for next season but that will definitely do it for today's episode if you did enjoy that pretty comfortable win there against Baitar Jerusalem as well as two of the three Icelandic teams down in the Conference League making their way through to the next qualifying round then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up 
on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel then do remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated and until the start of next week we're just going to come back in the not too distant future for that third qualifying round against Norkipping of Sweden thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and I'll see you then cheers